Paul was the lead organizer of a, of a worldwide special offering that was to go to support poor Christians in Jerusalem. Uh, Paul wrote letters. He encouraged all of the churches all around the world to take their own collection for this offering. And then it was his responsibility to arrange for that offering to be carefully audited and then safely transported to Jerusalem. This was such a big deal that it, it occurs, it's mentioned in multiple books of the Bible here in First and Second Corinthians, but also in the book of Acts. Uh, it's referred to in the book of Galatians. It's, it's maybe the biggest single project of Paul's entire ministry. Uh, you know, it, it's not clear exactly why the Christians in Jerusalem needed to receive an offering. If you're interested in that, scholars debate that. You can read the commentaries. There's stuff about it online. But what is clear is that whatever the financial need was, this fundraising campaign became a kind of symbolic issue for Paul. It became a symbol of the unity of Jews and Gentiles in the early church. It was a way for Gentile believers all over the world to show their respect, their honor for those original Jewish Christians in the city of Jerusalem. And when Paul first uh, talked to the Corinthian church about this fundraising campaign, I mean, they were all about it. They were all excited. They, they filled out their commitment cards with enthusiasm. But by the time Paul wrote 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, which is something like, a year later, guess how much the Corinthians had actually contributed towards this campaign? Nothing. You know, they had not contributed anything yet. And, and now, Paul's wondering, now what do we do? So that's the question. You know, how do you restore generosity that has faded? How do you remind people of generous promises that have been made, but not yet kept. Well, we all know, don't we? We all know how businesses do that, right? They send bills and they send more bills and they finally send one that says final invoice at the top with threatening letters and then they send it to a collection agency which harasses you. That's how businesses do it. In the church, we try to do things a little gentler you know, you probably receive from the church quarterly statements, right? And on the one side of the statement, it will list how much you have pledged year to date. On the other side of the statement, it will list how much you've given year to date. And we sort of leave it up to you to figure out what to do about that. You know, it's a, it's a little gentler. That's how businesses do it. That's how the church does it. But guess what? That's not the way the Apostle Paul did it when the Corinthians had, had made a generous promise and they had not yet followed through on that, what the Apostle Paul did was he wrote them a theological letter. <laughs> he wrote them the, this wonderful treatise about uh, our gratitude to God for God's grace and about the, the wonderful example of self-giving love from Jesus Christ, about the spiritual rewards for earthly generosity, um, all of that. You know, for the Apostle Paul was always like that, always. Uh, why, why use a secular approach? when you could talk to people about Jesus Christ, huh? um, we could all stand to be more like the Apostle Paul. One of the things that I really love about this particular scripture is one phrase that Paul uses. He talks about the privilege, the privilege of sharing in this ministry. It means the privilege of taking part in this special offering. Here's the backstory to that. Corinth, where the Corinthians were, Corinth was known as a very wealthy city. It had a strategic lo location on this little isthmus. It was on a, a key trading route, lots of businesses, interests, both Greek and Roman there. So we assume that the reason the Corinthians had not yet made a contribution probably wasn't that they couldn't afford to. Something else had to be going on. So Paul told the Corinthians in this letter about the way the Macedonians took part in this special offering. Now, unlike Corinth, 
At that time in history, Macedonia was in the midst of what we would call a serious recession, maybe even a a big depression, lots of people living in poverty in Macedonia. In fact, things were so rough financially in Macedonia, Paul didn't even send them one of his letters, right? He did not even ask them to take part in the offering because he figured they wouldn't have anything to give. But somehow the Macedonians found out about this special offering. And Paul says... They begged. <laughs> they, they begged to take part in it. He says, because they had given themselves first to the Lord, their joy and their extreme poverty worked together and overflowed in what he calls a wealth of generosity. And then he says that, that the Macedonians considered it a privilege. It was a privilege, even in their poverty. It was a privilege to be able to give. 